Hey everybody, it's Brad here, and welcome to another Expanse tutorial. Uh, as you can see, you know, it's kind of dark here, it's nighttime, and I have my, my little ring light up here giving me some very sexy Rembrandt lighting. Uh, but um, I've been meaning to do this tutorial for a while, and I had free hours, so, so I figured, why not do it right now? Um, this is going to be kind of a short tutorial where it's going to be split into two parts. The first part, we're going to talk uh, about sort of just the basics of interpolating different cloud presets so that you can transition smoothly from one cloud preset to another. And then the second part, we're actually going to work and, and do some programming together to build our own custom weather controller. Uh, so, so yeah, that's how it's going to go. I'm going to try and post a second video, uh, some, maybe like a week or two weeks after this first video goes up, uh, TBD on when that's going to be. Uh, and hopefully this video will just be like a quick one. So I want to give a little bit of background on Expanse's strategy for interpolation before we actually open up the Unity editor and, and play around with it ourselves. Um, but just to sort of set the scene, Say that you are outside, it's a nice kind of clear day and you see some puffy clouds that look like this and you go and you go into your favorite bookstore that's in a basement somewhere and you hang out for eight hours <laughs> and you come back out and I guess miraculously it's around the same time of day still and the clouds have changed to look something like this and there's a storm front coming. Um, this is a very contrived scenario, but you can imagine that uh, in in a lot of games, uh, they they'll, you know they'll take place over a long enough amount of time that the weather uh, throughout the game is is dynamic. It changes quite a bit. You have storms that come and go. You have clouds that come and go. You wake up one morning and it's a clear sky. You wake up the next morning and it's it's completely cloudy. Um, Expanse 1.3's clouds are pretty much static. There's a couple of things that you can change about them. You can change the lighting parameters, you can change some of the noise intensities, but the actual noises that you author, uh, they're, they're always going to be the same. And if, you, if you've ever tried to, to sort of mess around with automating those parameters, you'll notice that your performance drops a lot and it also looks like garbage. Um, so for Expanse 1.4, I, I wanted to solve this problem. Um, I, I've been meaning to solve it for a while, um, and, and I just wanted to make sure that you could author two different cloud presets that look totally different from each other, and then you could smoothly transition from one to the other. That way your game can have a whole bunch of different weather scenarios. So, so one way I thought about doing this was just regenerating those noises every frame and then allowing those noise parameters to be fully automatable. Um, the, the trouble with this is that there's this requirement that all of Expanse's noises are, are tiled uh, at integer tilings. If you've ever you know, used Expanse's cloud authoring system, uh, you'll be familiar with setting the different tile factors and the different noises. And these have to be integers, and so there's no smooth way to transition from 24 to 25. You just go 24, and then you're at 25. And so there's a snapping artifact that happens, and this looks not so good. The other problem is that this is just extremely computationally expensive. I was sort of playing around with ways to get the noises to be more performant to regenerate, but really, if you want you know, that high visual fidelity that Expanse is supposed to offer, the, the noises need to be really detailed, and so they need to be pre-computed, and you can't generate them on the fly. Um, another possibility was that I was just, you know, sort of, you could throw your hands up in the air and say, well, let's just re restrict ourselves to automating parameters that are not noise-related and try to make that look as good as possible. This is actually pretty much what every procedural cloud system in existence does right now. They just sort of say, look, we're not going to mess around with, with using arbitrary noise presets. We're pretty much just going to to let you pick a couple different noises, and then if you want to smoothly transition between different cloud presets, you're just going to use the same noise set for every one of them. Um, it's performant, which is great, um, and it's something we care about a lot in real-time applications. Uh, but the important thing here is that it actually restricts you a lot in terms of what you know the visual, the variety of clouds that you can you can author and transition between. Um, and the goal for this system was really to be able to transition between, you know, like in the real world, all sorts of different types of cloud coverage patterns. So the solution that ultimately I landed on is is basically just texture interpolation. Um, so uh, we have, you know, cloud presets that we pre-author. They have different noises. 
Um, and the way we transition from one to the other is we we alpha blend the pre-generated textures that we've that we've created. Um, the fact that the, the transition happens slowly means that we can we can amortize these updates over multiple frames. And so we only do a small amount of this blending operation every frame. And because the the textures are pre-computed, there's there's no need to regenerate them every frame. Instead, we're just blending between two textures that we already know, and this is very fast because there's hardware in the graphics card for alpha blending. And the result is that you can smoothly transition between arbitrary cloud styles at a cost of only 70 microseconds per frame, uh, which is pretty fast uh, and I think is, is well within like reason for, for, for a feature like this. Cool. So let's just open up Unity and take a look at how to do it. All right, so here we are in the good old Unity editor. Uh, just for the record, I'm using version 2020.1.17. You can use any version after that, and it should work fine. Uh, but I'm just using the oldest version that I support. Uh, and I've, I've basically just created a scene called Interpolation Tutorial, uh, extremely creative. <laughs> um, and and I, I, have a, I have a camera here with the clipping plane at 100,000, so Expanse's fog works correctly. Um, and I have a post-process volume uh, set up with an exposure override, and I, I have this this model of Manhattan, my favorite <laughs> little model for these tutorials in here right now. Um, if if you've set up a scene with Expanse before, you'll you'll know that you sort of have to mess with the over or the exposure override and and the clipping plane. Um, if you've never used Expanse before, I just want to say right now, probably you should go to our sort of getting started tutorial and and check that out. Uh, but if you have, you're in the right place. What we're going to do now is we're going to go over to the Expanse directory. We're going to go to Prefabs. We're going to go to Full Skies. And we're going to go to Expanse Interpolable Volumetric Cloud Sky dot Prefab. Uh, and, and all we have to do is, is just drag this into our hierarchy, and now we have a nice-looking <laughs> sky. Um, but there's no clouds in it, uh, and, and the way that we can get some clouds in here is we can go down and open up the, the sky prefab here. We can click the interpolable cloud volume, and, and, and you'll see over here in the inspector, we have the UI for the cloud layer interpolator. Um, so this is the main object that uh, that Expanse has to interpolate between cloud presets. Uh, there's there's a couple parameters on here, right? Um, there's the transition time, which says how long is it going to take for you to transition from the current preset to the target preset. It's in seconds. Right now it's at five. It's going so it's going to go pretty fast. Um, and then we have this bypass offset parameter. And basically what this does is just makes it, if it's, you know, if you check this, it makes it so that the clouds don't like zoom across the sky when you, you load different presets because they're at different offsets. Um, so you're going to probably want this checked. And then these three things here are just, indi they're just indicators. You can't actually set these parameters. Um, the progress will tick along as we load uh, a preset and, and it starts to interpolate towards the target. And then these will show you the two presets that you're that you're interested in. So I'm just going to hit. Uh, I, well, I'm going to move my camera to a spot that makes more sense. And then I am going to hit play. And I'm going to click load preset uh, here. And here I can go into the Expanse Blocks Presets Procedural Cloud Volume folder. I'm going to go to Cumulus and pick the preset Operation B, and you'll see it's loaded, the preset. Um, and now if I click Load Preset again and open up the same folder, and I'm going to open the preset Prairie Optimized, you'll see that it starts to interpolate uh, toward it until eventually it reaches it. But you'll see that once it gets to the end of the progress bar, it has this terrible thing where it snaps. And it, it looks, it, it totally destroys the illusion that we were smoothly transitioning between these two presets. So there's a problem, right? We want these presets to transition smoothly. It looks kind of like they're blending for a while, and then uh, and then there's this horrible snapping at the beginning and at the end. Um, the reason for this is that these two presets were authored with different tile factors for the noises that they that they use. Um, 
and Expanse does its best to try to reconcile these different tile factors uh, and interpolate smoothly between them, but uh, but it, it oftentimes it can't, and you get a snapping artifact. Uh, there is a way to fix this, though, uh, and that is to just author all of your cloud presets all at the exact same tile factors. Obviously, this would kind of suck, especially if you've already authored a bunch of presets, so I've created a component that will help to uh, to take one preset and make it compatible with another one so you can interpolate between them. And hopefully this will let you recover all the presets that you've already created and they'll look more or less the same. So we're gonna use that right now. I'm gonna uncheck play mode here and I'm gonna go and I'm gonna add a component here to the interpolable cloud volume. I'm gonna type the cloud preset mapper. So I'm gonna add that script and I'm gonna pick a, a source preset which is going to be the preset that I want to adjust. So I'm going to go to presets. Uh, I'm going to go to procedural cloud volume. I'm going to do a stratus one. I'm going to do I'm going to do Minerva. And I'm going to say load target preset stratus, and I'm going to pick uh, I'm going to pick Jade optimized. And now if I click map source on the target, this button, it's going to take the, the, the source preset here, Minerva optimized, and it's gonna make it compatible with Jade optimized, and it's gonna pack it into a new preset. So I am going to save this. Uh, I'm just gonna create a new folder. I'm gonna call it tutorial presets. Open that up. And I'm gonna call this Minerva mapped onto Jade and save it. Cool. And now, if we hit play again, you can do it in the editor too, but I've noticed that it's smooth, it's smoother because the frame rate's higher uh, in, in play mode. I'm gonna load the preset Jade. Cool. And now I'm gonna load the preset that we just created. Oh, my battery level is critical. Okay, let's hope it lasts. All right load that and now you'll see that there's no snapping artifacts it just works perfectly and we can load that and we can go back if we want to going back works fine and yeah there you have it <laughs> uh that's pretty much it honestly it's just you know author all your presets that you want um and by the way, when you when you do that, I would recommend sort of if you if you're gonna use the interpolable cloud sky, I, I would I would disable this interpolable cloud volume, and create a new cloud volume. Just add the procedural cloud volume block. I don't know. We can load that preset that we had, and then uh, I would call this like your authoring cloud volume. Uh, and then I would just use this cloud volume that's not interpolable to actually author all the presets that you want to author. Um, and and that's just because it this interpolable cloud volume is pretty much it's kind of like a runtime only construct. Um, like if you try to actually come in here and like adjust the parameters of the cloud volume itself, you'll notice that in the noise editor. Um, there's like there's nothing is set and if you start to change things then it, it might automatically do things for you because it's hooked up to the interpolator so i i would just basically say like reserve these interpolable cloud volumes for just loading presets and if you're going to actually try to author stuff just use a separate one and it'll just ease the workflow a lot more it'll make it a lot easier for you i think all right guys well that just about does it for this tutorial i hope that you learned how to use the new cloud layer interpolator to smoothly transition between different presets that you author um in the next sort of you know part two of this tutorial we are going to actually use the cloud layer interpolators programming api to create our own custom weather controller that will allow us to automatically you know pick a random weather preset and transition toward it and then pick another random one and transition toward that um and it'll be kind of like a like a weather playlist or something that's on shuffle like a, if you use spotify <laughs> um uh but until then until next time 
I'll say thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great day.